Alright guys, so we're back with a brand new video, and in the last video, I briefly talked about something called dynamic rendering. So you can see right now we have three user components, and let's say if we had a larger application, and we have more user components, right? Let's say we have about 10 users that needed to be displayed to the DOM, so let's just copy about 10 of these, or display these 10 times. So you can see now we have 10 user components that are being displayed in our application. Now... The thing is, is we are pretty much just hard coding this, right? We're not in any form making this dynamic whatsoever. So if we have a larger application, how are you going to display more users, more than just 10? Because yeah, sure, you can get away with just displaying three users for now. And maybe you can get away with displaying 10 users, but how would you display 100 users, 200, 300, even 1,000? You obviously don't want to copy and paste this over and over again a thousand times. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use dynamic rendering. So the idea is we want to take any array that contains data. So for example, I can go up here and I'm going to go and create a new variable users. And this is going to be an array of user objects. So we'll have a name, Anson, language will be JavaScript, and then job will be React JS developer. And I'm just going to copy this again twice. Okay, so we have an array of user objects. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of this temporarily. And you can see that's not being rendered to the DOM. Now let's say this data can come from anywhere. It can come from an API, it can come from a JSON file, wherever. In our case, we're just declaring it in our app.js file. So we have our data, okay? And what we want to do is we want to essentially transform every single one of these objects that's inside this array and build a JSX element. So what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, if I was looping through this array, okay, well, each element we know is an object and it has properties, name, language, and job. But instead of just looping it, we want to map through it. And for every single element, we want to take every single property and pass it into the corresponding component. So since we have a user component, we want to call dot map, which is going to return a new array of user components. So let me show you an example. And we'll look at a couple too, so don't worry. So... Right now you can see that I am wrapping everything inside a curly brace. Because remember what I said earlier, when you have those curly braces, it means it's going to interpolate the values. So we're going to call users.map. Now this is going to take a callback function. So pass in the parameter, which is the current object. We're just going to call it user. And if I actually reference user, you can see that we have our three properties, job, language, and name. Now what we want to do is we want to return a user component with all of our properties passed in. So name, property and obviously we would reference user.name but since that is a property we need to interpolate it by wrapping it in between curly braces so user.name and we'll do the same for language user.language and then job is user.job just like this so now watch what happens you can see that we have all of our user components and that is all coming from this line right over here that is wrapped between these curly braces so let me actually console log that and notice how we have this array and you see how we actually don't have an, we actually have an array of a react element it looks a little bit weird but these are basically react components okay you can see type of symbol react element we have three of them so essentially that's what's going on is we're basically dynamically rendering all of our data because now i can go ahead and just continue to add value so i can go ahead and say danny language will do c plus plus and then job systems programmer and you can see we have four user components now and i can continue to add as many as i want and like i said this data can come from anywhere it can come from an api or a file. So instead of hard coding the same components multiple times, instead the better thing to do is to dynamically render it. Okay, so hopefully this users.map part makes sense because all it's doing is it's calling dot map and I highly suggest you guys look up what array.map does. Okay, it basically just creates a new array and it populates that array with the results by calling this callback function right over here. So this callback function returns a new user component and that user component is just going to get added to the new array that's returned. In our case, we're not saving it to a variable or anything we're just straight up rendering it onto the dom and we need to make sure we have the curly braces otherwise it's going to give us an error so let's go ahead and do one more thing let's let's do this with posts now so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of post and let's go up here and let's just declare a variable called posts and we'll do title my first programming language and the content will say i started out learning 
Python in 2020. And we'll create one more post or a couple more. Let's do three. My favorite web framework. And then we'll just do, I love Swift and Kotlin. And we can also do something like this where, let's say you might not want to nest this in your component because it kind of looks ugly. You could do it right over here, like outside the function app component. So I can say posts component is equal to posts.map. And for every single post, we're going to go ahead and return a post component. We're going to have to pass in the properties. So title, and then we have to remember interpolate post.title and then content post.content. Okay, and then I can render it by doing the same thing, curly braces, post component. And if I go to the app, you can see that we have all three of our posts. Now you're gonna see that we actually have this warning. It says each child in a list should have a unique key. So actually, when you are mapping through, you can actually pass in a second parameter called key. And this key itself is basically the current index. So you can assign this current index to whatever component you want. So in this in our case, the zeroth element would have a key of zero. And then the first one would have the key of one, two, and then, and then so on and so forth. So if you just add that there, and then add that there, the warning will go away. But obviously this is not an ideal solution because you probably will have IDs that are in your data source. So let's say for example, if you're fetching your database with a bunch of users, chances are they're probably going to have some kind of unique identifier. Okay, so let's say for users, we can add in another property called ID. So we can give it a unique value of let's say zero. And then we can give this a unique value of one, ID of two. Obviously these are just arbitrary values, nothing specific, but what I'm gonna do is let me go ahead and get rid of this constant users component. And what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and give key the value of user dot ID instead. And we can do the same thing with post two. Your posts might have IDs as well. So you can give your posts IDs. So ID of let's just say one, two, three. Again, like I said, these are arbitrary values. It all depends on what's returned from your data source. So five, six, seven. And then we'll do the same thing right over here. Key equals post.id. And then we can render users component right over here. And then there you go, the warning disappears. All right, so hopefully this video of dynamic rendering made sense. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.